بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we're going to talk about bubble pressure and new pressure calculations using Raoult's law as an agenda for this topic We're going to talk about vapor, various vapor pressure calculations, vapor liquid equilibrium calculations using ideal solutions and if I can uh, revert back to all the previous lectures, ideal solutions, whether in the vapor phase or in the liquid phase. In the vapor phase, we mentioned that Raoult's law is using the ideal gas mixture or ideal gas solution concept. And in the liquid phase, we are using the ideal solution concept. And the ideal gas concept is a special case of the ideal solution. And we're going to talk the, about those calculations and their hierarchy of complexity because some of them are straightforward and some of them are iterative in nature. We are going to take as a demonstration for the straightforward, in this case, the bubble B and UP calculations, their concepts and algorithms, and take an example. In this case, we can have in the vapor liquid equilibrium calculations three types of uh, or three categories of calculations. The bubble point calculations, dew point calculations, and flash calculations. Bubble point calculations can be subdivided into two calculations, bubble B and bubble T calculation. In bubble B calculations, we are given the temperature and we are required to calculate the total pressure, whether we are given the mole fraction in the liquid phase or in the vapor phase. In the bubble T calculation, we are given the pressure and we are required to calculate the temperature. The same thing for dew calculations. In dew point calculations, we have dew P and dew T. In dew P calculations, we are given the temperature and we are required to calculate the pressure, given the mole fractions in the liquid phase. While in the uh, dew T calculations, we are given the pressure and we are required to calculate the temperature, given the mole fractions in the vapor phase also. In the third category, which is flash calculations, the only topic we are going to deal with in this course is the isothermal isobaric, which is T and P specified in this case. Remember that also the hierarchy of complexity topic states that YIP equals XIP I vapor. And remember that the vapor pressure is a function of temperature. And what's special about this dependence on temperature that it is highly nonlinear, <coughs> which may or exponential. So this renders some of the calculations mentioned previously as straightforward and some of them as hard or iterative in nature. The easy and straightforward calculations are bubble P and U P. Why is that? Because in this case we are given the temperature. And if we are given the temperature, we can calculate the vapor pressure directly without any iteration. Now, the harder part or the trial and error part is when we are not given the temperature, we are given the pressure. In this case, we need to calculate the temperature. To calculate the temperature in this case requires an iterative solution in nature or a trial and error solution. The hardest type of calculation is the flash calculation. And in this case, usually, usually we need trial and error to calculate it based on distribution coefficients and vapor fractions and we are going to talk to about this later. As a demonstration of a straightforward calculation, we are going to talk about bubble B and UP calculation. In bubble B calculations, what we are given is temperature and mole fractions in the liquid phase. Temperature and liquid, uh, once we are given temperature and components, the step to take is to go directly to any reference that catalogs or uh, tabulates the Antoine equation constants for each component. You might revert to thermosolver software, or you might revert to any textbook in chemical engineering thermodynamics or your elementary principles books, since in their appendices you will find the Antoine constants tabulated in this case. Or you might revert to more complicated forms, such as those found in the process simulators, such as HISIS, ChemCAD, and Aspen Plus. Now, once we have the Antoine equation constants and the temperature, we can directly calculate or evaluate the vapor pressure at the prescribed temperatures. Now, a common trick using Raoult's law or any thermodynamic model, once we are 
given the mole fraction in the liquid phase, we sum the mole fractions in the vapor phase, which are still unknown. So if we sum over them, their summation must be one, which eliminates them to end up with a single equation that gives one unknown, which is the total pressure. P equals summation Xi, Pi vapor pressure. Now, what we are given in the statement is the mole fraction in the liquid phase are known. The vapor pressure is known because we know the temperature, so we can calculate the total pressure. Now we have three parts of the Raoult's law, which ends up after a rearrangement to give us that the mole fraction in the vapor phase equals mole fraction in the liquid phase times the vapor pressure for each component divided by the total pressure calculated from this equation. Then we can obtain our unknown mole fractions in the vapor phase and in the and the pressure. And the same thing can be applied to new P calculations. But in new P calculations, what we are given now is the mole fractions in the vapor phase, not in the liquid phase. And we are given the temperature. So the same step as in the bubble B calculation, we obtain the Antoine equation constants. We go and calculate the vapor pressures. Now the trick here in new calculations which it distinguishes it from the bubble B calculations is how do we calculate the total pressure. Since we know the YIs, it does not make any use to sum over the mole fractions in the vapor phase. What we need to do is to sum over the mole fractions that are unknown, which are the XIs. So if we sum over the XIs from Raoult's law, we end up with the equation that says that the total pressure is the reciprocal of the summation of mole fractions in the vapor phase divided by the vapor pressure of each component. Now, once we have obtained the total pressure, we can go ahead and calculate the mole fractions in the liquid phase using rearranged Raoult's law, that is YIP, which is the partial pressure divided by the vapor pressure. And we can output them accordingly. To have an example in bubble P calculations, what we need to do is Consider the system benzene, toluene, and methylene. BTX. BTX is usually a very important system, whether in petroleum refining or in many applica industrial applications, whether in the chemical process industries and pharmaceutical industries, as a catalyst media, as a reaction media, as a solvent. So the solution is very important and has many applications. So what we have is a liquid solution of this component, which has the composition X equals 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 for the components in their respective order at T equals 300 Kelvin. And we to find the equilibrium pressure and vapor compositions at the prescribed conditions. This is categorized as bubble B calculations. Why is that? We are given the mole fractions in the liquid phase. I remember in mathematics, once you see a mathematical symbol, usually that is a bold phase, it means that it's either a vector or a matrix. That is, it has more than one value. It's not a scalar. It does not have one value. So when you see X as a bold phase, it, and we have three components, then we need to specify three elements of this vector, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So, we have X and we have T, and we are required to calculate P and Y. So clearly this is a bubble B calculation. And according to our algorithm, we mentioned that first thing is to obtain the Antoine equation constants. I will revert to thermosolver. Thermosolver is a small package that comes with the a textbook uh, written by Kertiski and it's distributed for free so you can download it from the internet and I will revert back to not to species database to saturation pressure calculator and if you know thermosolver it is usually organized according to the number of carbon atoms in the component we are using so I'm going to use benzene benzene uh, has the formula C6H6 and in the saturation pressure calculator, either I will give him the temperature, he will give me the vapor pressure, or I'll give him the vapor pressure and he will give me the temperature. In this case, the temperature is given, so 300 Kelvin, and I will tell him solve. I will see that the vapor pressure in this case is 0.138 bars. I will revert back now. 
Tomorrow. Now, what do we have? We have developed pressure benzene. You can demonstrate to yourself uh, using the same approach that toluene and xylene has the vapor pressures 0.04 and 0.012 and this, those are their constants A, B and C in the Antoine equation and if we revert back to thermosolver you can notice in this area that thermosolver gives you the equation A, B and C for this component which is benzene the same thing if you put toluene and xylene you will obtain the values for those components which enables you to use, for example, an Excel worksheet. And to calculate usually, whether bubble point or dew point calculations, I prefer you to use a table like in this uh, manner, since it's more convenient to be used. Now, we have the vapor pressures. All you need to do is, in the bubble B calculation, to multiply the mole fraction of benzene times its vapor pressure, mole fraction of toluene times its vapor pressure, and the mole fraction of xylene times its vapor pressure, and some of those result products to obtain that the total pressure is 0.071449 bars. To obtain the mole fractions in the vapor phase, all I need to do is divide this number, which is the product of XIP, divided by the total pressure to obtain that the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase is 0.773 and the mole fraction of toluene in the vapor phase is 0.175 and that of xylene is 0.05 now as an error trap if your calculations are correct the summation of the yi's that you have calculated the mole fraction in the vapor phase should sum up to 1 if you obtain a result other than 1 most likely that you have committed a mistake, whether a mathematical mistake or a logical or a semantic mistake in this case. Now what we, did, what we can do is calculate, for example, the distribution coefficients. What is the distribution coefficient? It is the ratio of the mole fraction in the vapor phase divided by the mole fraction in the liquid phase. If we look at the distribution coefficients, we see that for benzene it's 1.9, for toluene it's about 0.6, and for xylene, it's about 1.17. Also, we can calculate the relative volatilities. The relative volatilities, since we, since we have three components, we can obtain three relative volatilities. Alpha 1.2. Alpha 1.2 is benzene to toluene, relative volatility between benzene and toluene. Alpha 1.3, that is the relative volatility between benzene and xylene, and the relative volatility between toluene and xylene. This is a combination uh, thing. If you remember your statistics course, for a three components, you can obtain three combinations in those cases. And if we look at the uh, values of those alphas, it's 3.3 or uh, and 11 and 3.38. Now, some questions that you can answer in a exam setting is which system has the Largest relative volatility, directly you, you might answer it's benzene and metaxylene. Which system has the lowest relative volatility? It is the system benzene and toluene uh, with very close uh, value between toluene and metaxylene. Is, is it possible to apply ordinary distillation to separate those components? Your answer needs to be yes. Why? Because in previous lectures, we have noticed that usually ordinary distillation is recommended for alpha values that are outside the range 0.95 to 1.05. And clearly, those alpha values are outside this range. So ordinary distillation is recommended for such systems. The easiest system to separate, apparently, is benzene and metaxylene. Now, if you have a distillation column, most likely you will see benzene in the distillate stream and you will see xylene in the bottom stream. To continue on this, we can have a dew point calculation, dew pressure calculations, the same system. Now we are given y equals 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and the same temperature, 300 Kelvin as the previous example. I wanted to find the equilibrium pressure and liquid compositions at the prescribed uh, conditions. 
This is a dew pressure calculation. Why? We have temperature and we have more fractions in the vapor phase and we are required to calculate the equilibrium pressure and the liquid excess. Liquid composition, we can carry on exactly like in the previ previous uh, example. Other than now we have the YI, the ABC, we got them from the thermosolver software and notice that because the temperature is fixed between those two examples the vapor pressures are the same so what we need to do right now is to we alter our approach to calculating the total pressure in this case we need to calculate yi over vapor pressure i that is i will divide yi by 0.4 by 0.138 2.89 0.3.04 is 7.1 and 0.3.012 is 24. I will sum those up and take the reciprocal, their reciprocal. <coughs> In this case, we have the total pressure as 0.029. Now to obtain the mole fractions in the liquid phase, all I need to do is to calculate YIP over PI. And notice that uh, to reduce your amount of work, you already calculated YI over PI. So all you need to do is multiply this value by the total pressure value here. And we notice that benzene is 0.84, toluene is 0.21, and xylene is 0.71. Also, make sure that your summations here is 1. If you committed a mistake, whether syntax or semantic uh, mistake, you will see that your summation here will not add up to one. The same thing, we can calculate the distribution coefficients and notice the distribution coefficients between the two examples are different. Why are they different? Because Raoul's law say that the distribution coefficient by definition is yi over xi. And from Raoul's law, it is the ratio of vapor pressure to total pressure. And since total pressure has changed between the bubble point and dew point, it is clear that the distribution coefficients is changing. However, notice that the relative volatilities are the same between the two examples. 3.31, 11.2, and 3.38. 3.31, 11.2, and 3.38. Why is this a surprising result? It's not surprising at all. From Raoul's law, we know that the distribution coefficient is the ratio of total pressure to that of the total pressure, while the relative volatility is the ratio of the distribution coefficients of two components. Now, since we know that P1 V by pressure 1 over total pressure over P2 V by pressure 2 over P, we will eliminate the dependence of pressure in this case. So we end up with the relative volatility according to Raoul's law being a function only of temperature, which, which is natural right now is to obtain the same relative volatilities, although the pressures are different in this case because the temperature is fixed constant. Now it's your turn to take this quiz and uh, carry